Hello there, and a very warm welcome to Jazingdra Chats, the show where we take a stroll through the life stories of people in the Pokemon community, discovering the six Pokemon on their dream team along the way. I'm Charlie Merriman, Merry by name, Merry by nature, otherwise known as Chazingdra, a host and commentator for the Pokemon Video Game Championship Series, and a content creator. This week, as every week, I very much hope my guests and I can brighten your day, because I have the honour, the pleasure of being joined by Tales of Taylor. Taylor, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and no, the, the honor's all mine. Chazingdra. <laughs> Chazingdra? Did I say it right? Yes, it is. Chaz, short for Charlie, combined Chaz. with Kingdra, my favorite Pokemon. Kingdra. Chazingdra. Chazingdra. Okay, cool. All right. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to say it. I, every time I saw it, I was like, chat, chaz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I, um, yeah, I, I can understand that. But here you go. This is the confirmation for you now. Now I know. Okay, good. <laughs> It'll be on the test later. I'll pass the test. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, yeah, we've just, uh, as is the way for God Decorators, we've just had a whole slew of technical issues. But we're here and we're ready to goes. start recording. Now, Taylor, anyone who's not so familiar with you, can you give a brief introduction to yourself? A brief inter- introduction. This is, it's already going great. Can't say I can't, I can't, 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 say, say, I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm uh, I'm Tales of Taylor. I also go by Pokey Tot. Uh, I'm a streamer, content creator. Uh, I love Pokemon. Pokemon is just uh, I love it so much. I do a lot of videos about it. I shiny hunt. I'm a dad and an epic gamer and also a collector of. I like stuff. I like I like getting stuff, and that's pretty much me. So you don't say. I, I yeah. couldn't I couldn't see any kind of collection yeah. behind there's you. Some, there's a couple so. things back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are now. Taylor and I have never met in person, but having spoken to people on the podcast like Quick Panic Kyle, Matt Absol Blogs Pokemon, Katatsu in Universe, I wanted to get involved with Tales of Taylor as well. A such a fun shiny hunting and content creating community. I'm very excited to be able to have you on the show. And as I said, I've said to you before, I find your videos so funny, and uh, I'm really looking forward to our chat today. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. No, I. Kyle, Kotatsu, uh, Matt, all of them are really cool. I got the pleasure of meeting them a couple months ago. So, yeah, all in person, like, yeah, which was cool. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be able to talk a little bit more about that later mm-hmm. on in the episode. But uh, for now, shall we do it? Shall we take a deeper dive into you and the six Pokemon that you'll choose for your dream team? So Let's do it! Yeah. Thank you <laughs> for the openness of what you're sharing today, and thank you for submitting some really fun topics here. So, what we're going to start with here, this is uh, this is really attention grabbing. I'm I'm very intrigued to hear about this. Your generation two shiny sand true at elementary school, right? Okay, that's yeah. Uh, when I think back to to anything Pokemon and, and nostalgia wise, uh, this this all this always pops up in my head. You know, I I for the longest time thought that. Because I got silver when I was a kid. I got silver for Christmas and a purple Game Boy Color. My brother got... My younger brother got a lime green Game Boy and Pokemon Gold. And obviously we started our Pokemon journeys. That's actually where we started was in Gen 2. Um, we didn't play Gen 1 yet, so we hadn't played it. But we watched the show. We we, we knew all about it. We collected the cards and stuff like that. But anyways. Um, I had... Uh, Re- played through silver i'd beaten silver and stuff like that and the only p- shiny pokemon i knew about was obviously the gyarados but i kind of just assumed that the gyarados was just its own thing and there were no other shiny pokemon it was just gyarados uh and so eventually uh, when me and my brother were being babysat uh at a place uh one of the other kids there started a new game on my brother's file and deleted his file basically you know he saved that kid saved over his file and so i took it upon myself to play as pokemon gold and while going through um the cave to azalea town um with the last encounter before i was coming out of the cave was this shiny Sandshrew, and it sparkled and everything i was like oh what the heck i was like maybe all Sandshrews do that and i just never realized i was like that's crazy i was like, that's so weird and uh, anyways, I knocked it out, and then I just <laughs> carried on, and I never thought about it. I never thought about it again. But until, and then I was like, I was like, wait, this sparkles like that Gyarados. You know, I kept thinking about it after knocking it out. I was like, it didn't give me any bonus experience. I thought that it was going to give me extra experience, but it didn't. It was just a full odd shiny Sandshrew, and uh, I'm on a journey to reclaim it now. I, I got to get it back. <laughs> so that's that's the shiny Sandshrew. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you're not the first person on the podcast to talk about uh, just the things that race through your mind when you encounter a random shiny. And is it supposed to be caught? What's going on? Is my game glitching? Yeah. Um, the fact that you had already encountered that red Gyarados, though, and you still not to that. That's, uh... <laughs> I just thought the Gyarados was its own thing. It was just special. That's just what it did. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I mean, obviously you were very young, so uh, right, totally, right. totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, goodness, wow! So, okay, elementary school. So, roughly, how old would you have been at this point? Um, I want to say I was in. I was probably in third or fourth grade. I want to say. Um, yeah, and to my third, British third mind, grade. how old would that be? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I oh man, I've. I want to say probably 10. So, okay. you know, the, the yeah. correct time to start a Pokemon mm. journey. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was just unfortunate because my brother's file, you know, got, got deleted. And then I literally knock out a shiny Pokemon on it. Yeah. So <laughs> just that whole file is just cursed now. Yeah, yeah wow. That's uh, your poor brother. And is your brother older or younger? He's younger, younger. Younger, He's okay. Two, by two years, so. Okay, right. Yeah. And it's interesting that Gold and Silver, you were first. But if they were gifts for you... Had you expressed any kind of interest in Pokemon beforehand, or did your parents just think, oh, well, this is a huge phenomenon? How did that work out? No, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, you know, we didn't grow up with the Gen 1 games, but we obviously gr- we grew up with the anime. We grew up with the cards. Yeah. We grew up going to Burger King and getting all the toys and uh, the golden the golden carrot cards uh, from Burger King. Um so, you know, we, Pokemon was a big part of our life. We had plushies. We, we were gifted all sorts of stuff um, from that. But but uh, but this was, we didn't have Game Boys. And so when they got us a Game Boy, they got us the new Pokemon game. And obviously, we just fell more in love with the series. So, mm. so yeah. Yeah. The rest is history. Absolutely. Um, and that, that, that is a really good... That makes total sense as your origin story as to now what you do and not only reclaim that sign but all kinds of other shiny quests and other kinds of Pokemon content. So a perfect yep. segue into asking, I have a little bit of suspicion as to what this first Pokemon on your dream team might be, but uh, asking what that will be, and as a reminder for everyone, the aim is not for Taylor to build the most competitively viable team in any way, it's just the Pokemon that are the... Uh, <laughs> it's always telling which guests sort of chuckle at that and how they've gone about building their teams. Um, but the Pokemon that are most special to Taylor in whichever way, uh, and he can define that for himself. So, Taylor, tell us, what's going to be this first Pokemon on your dream team? Well, I uh, so the first Pokemon on the dream team is, and I've... I hear it, I mean, all the time. All the time. Some of the most common comments that I get are, you know, oh, dang, you know, I heard everybody has a favorite, but not this one. Or, or uh, uh, you know, oh, I was not ready for this man to say that his favorite Pokemon is Illumise. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, a, I have a reason, okay? I have a special bond with this Pokemon, and so she is, we'll say, as my first Pokemon on my Mm -hmm. team and even if she's she may have not been competitively viable at one point but she has been more recently with prankster and and she's she's been she's been doing stuff so Mm -hmm. you know she's she could she's a menace all right (laughs) and and Ah! adorable all right (laughs) yeah the adorable menace indeed well i mean i definitely thought that the first pokemon on your team was gonna be shiny sandry oh okay yeah no uh we're going right into uh Right into my favorite Pokemon. So, uh, so evolving from an elementary student into a middle schooler, um, uh, my best friend at the time, he, uh, I remember him coming up to me and he was like, he was like, dude, I found like a Numel, and I was like, oh, weird. I guess it's like a different variant of of Numel or Numel or Numel, the you know the yeah, turtle thing yeah. um, <laughs> that evolves into Camerupt, which is a Pokemon I can say I can, I know how to say that one. Um, anyways, he was like he was like yeah I found like this one and it sparkled and I was like wait I that's like the that's like the Gyarados from Gen two I was like no way I was like no no you didn't <laughs> so he showed me and I was like that's crazy because he was training his Pokemon in that cave in Ruby and Sapphire and Ruby or Sapphire and uh, <laughs> then like maybe like two weeks later he finds a shiny Torkoal. And which is incredibly rare on the same file too, and so so I was like, "There's no way! Like, how is he doing this? How is he getting away with this?" I was like, "Okay, so then all I have to do is just I just gotta do some random encounters, you know, I'll, and eventually I'll find something." And while casually playing through, I ended up finding a shiny Tailo, which 
I loved. I, I actually nicknamed it after a Sonic character. I nicknamed him Jet, and because uh, it was a green bird, and Jet is a green bird. And then continuing on that same file and playing through, Illumise popped up as Shiny. And I never, like, ever looked at Illumise as, like, a Pokemon that was like, oh, I gotta bring this thing to the Elite Four, you know? <laughs> but when I found her Shiny, I was like, this Pokemon is so cool. <laughs> and so I just, like, she was just... My number one, she was my main Pokemon that I used for the entire playthrough, and so she just became a connection with me. Like, mm. I, I just, you know, I beat the game with her, and uh, and that, that Talo as well, um, that eventually evolved into a Swellow. It was just <laughs> because I found the shiny, and then I just was like, okay, I, I see it now. I see the vision. She's, mm. she's a great and adorable Pokemon, and she's powerful because she, she beat the game for me, so, so I just, I fell in love. Very cool. Yeah. You poor soul uh, playing through <laughs> with uh, Illumiso new team. I say that because, of course, it's not the, as you say, not the strongest Pokemon no. in a competitive sense. I also love Illumiso and Volbeat. But, uh, I mean, was the Illumiso carried by the rest of your team or did it put in work against the Elite Oh, no, she put in work because she can, she can learn some crazy moves. Like, she mm. can learn Shockwave. So she was, Ooh. like, learning moves that, like... You know, she had some super effective uh, goodness against a lot of uh, a lot of Pokemon throughout the mm. uh, throughout the playthrough. So, so okay. but but Fair I nice. would say also, you know, you know, she didn't necessarily carry the team, but you know, when you over level one Pokemon a little <laughs> bit more than the others, she she does start to carry. Yeah. So yeah. No, that's yeah. really good to hear. I'm really yeah. pleased. Yeah. Just goes to show, you know, we've got more than a thousand Pokemon now. All of them could do work in various ways, and it's just up to us to discover. That potential. Also, though, Illumise on that route in Generation Three, a pretty rare encounter, if I remember yeah, correctly. I want to say, I want to say she's like a fifteen percent. Um, and yeah. and you know the opposite for the games too. You know she's yeah. like she's one percent in the opposite game, and, mm. and I believe Sapphire, and then Volbeat's one percent in Ruby. Um, so yeah, pretty mm. pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, well that just cements, again, as I was saying, the path that you're on now. So, Illumise, and I'm assuming specifically shiny Illumise here. Yeah, I would go with the yeah. shiny, although yeah, I do cool. like the regular one too. You know, yeah, I've just, yeah, yeah. I've, I yeah. like her all in general, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. For, sure, for sure a shiny one on the team. Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense based yeah. on the story you just said. So, yeah. shiny Illumise, welcome to the team. I'm going to flutter over from there into, first of all, doing that classic... YouTube content creator thing of saying, please do like and subscribe if you're enjoying our chat so far. It really do go a long way. And uh, look at that thumbs up that says again. Look at yeah. that beaming smile as well. <laughs> is, is, uh, yeah, how could you resist that? Um, uh, would really mean a lot. And I mean, there's so much more to uncover here. So, Taylor, let's flutter over to. Well, I mean, from there, is it now time to talk about what the second Pokemon is on your dream team? Yeah. Um, yes. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Um, Mousehold. Let's go Mouse Hold. Mm. Let's go more newer Pokemon. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's uh nice. there's there is so many phenomenal designs in Gen 9 that I just absolutely love. But as soon as I saw Tandem Mouse, I was like, I gotta have this thing. I just love it so much. We got like Yes. Oh, you get it. You get it. Oh, I yeah. have a, I get it. I have like I a tissue it. I have a tissue box that has them on it. Like oh, yeah. I, we have yeah, oh my gosh. We have the hoodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That we have is the so, hoodies. Yeah, yeah. Very, and now, really cool. and I have two daughters now. Now, so um, we we all like we can all like match uh, as a family of four. Did so. you have your two daughters just because of the mouse old? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, when when I I at one point wanted to go for the one percent uh, family yeah. of three, and I wanted to get a shiny one, you know. Mm. But but I was like, you know, wait, and then and then. Ashley Ashley got pregnant, and then we were like, "Well, hold on, never mind." The family of four is a little bit more special to me now, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. maybe I don't need the super rare one. But mm. it's it's funny too because uh, my daughter actually, I was streaming at one point, and uh, she walked in and she said, "She said, can we catch a Pokemon? Can we catch a Pokemon?" While I was doing Scarlet Violet, and uh, and <laughs> my wife goes, "Only one Pokemon." only one you can catch a pokemon i'm go okay all right all right so i got out of the camp and then you know when you're in camp there's no wild spawns in 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 pokemon mm. in pokemon scarlet and violet and so everything spawned in she walked up to the first pokemon she saw and i was like oh a tandem mouse let's go catch that and i was like wait 
Wait a second, because my Epic Gamer trained eyes have <laughs> have noticed a slight color difference in this tandem mouse, uh, meaning that it's shiny and really, really rare because it was also full odds. So it was a one out of 4,096 chance, and she runs into it, it sparkles, and I'm freaking out, and she has no idea, and she just goes, he's a mouse. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> and so so tandem mouse became even more of a of a favorite of mine because of that memory with her and uh just the fact that it happened all live on stream was uh yeah was phenomenal so oh my goodness <laughs> i mean that's uh, what i'm hearing so far is that your luck is just absolutely phenomenal um but of course i'm sure this sort of belies all of the thousands and thousands of encounters you've had on hunts that you've done in the past but yeah. incredible i mean you're also just providing that very lucky touch when you picked up the game that's yeah. uh and i love that reason as to why Specifically, Mousehold rather than Tandem Mouse is, right? Your, uh, yeah, on yeah. your dream team. Yeah, yeah we're going to go yeah. Mousehold, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And Mousehold is my favorite Generation 9 Pokemon, so uh, we're Me certainly too. speaking on that level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, incredible. Um, am we going with the regular Mousehold rather than Shiny for this one? Uh, we, could go, we could go either or. I, since, okay. since she found a Shiny one, let's go Shiny. Oh, true. Let's also do another yeah, okay. Shiny one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Presumably, that evolved into the family of four. Right. Yeah, it, right. d- it did okay. evolve into a okay. family of four. Yeah, we checked. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. So. <laughs> um, still, we uh, the family of three mousehold, for anyone who's uh, not aware, yeah, that's uh, one out of 100 channels. And then multiply that by the odds of finding a shiny Pokemon, differently colored, as we were saying, uh, one out of 4,096 chance in games from Generation 6 onwards. You get an incredibly rare find. And yeah, right. at some point, maybe I will also go for that shiny family of three mousehold. But, uh, well... <laughs> Shiny Mousehold, welcome to the team alongside Illy Mise. Now from there, we're going into, of course, YouTube. Way back when, in high school, uh, 2009, um, is when we started our, our, our first YouTube channel. And back then on YouTube, it was kind of like, everybody's doing sketch comedy. So that's kind of like what we were doing. We were doing some sketch comedy stuff and uh, wanted to make some stuff happen. Um, and uh, then eventually... Um, I ended up having to come to Texas, um, for family and, uh, and, uh, because I could no longer stay where I was in California. We were in San Diego at the time. Anyways, uh, so now that I, that, then I moved to Texas, which is where I'm, I'm at still to this day. And, um, (laughs) eventually, you know, I, I kind of was like, well, you know, we can't really do anything else because I moved away from, from my friends. And so like, what am I going to do? A bunch of time passes by, and uh, I see an article about <laughs> about a guy that's finding video games in a dumpster. And I was like, dude, this is too good to be true. So I got some friends, and uh, we, we went and checked. And, of course, we recorded it with, with my iPhone. And, uh, you know, we found stuff. We, we found things that GameStop was throwing away. So, uh, and uh, we posted it online, and that was the origin of uh tales of taylor um so so yeah that that channel that channel name is now on my pokemon channel which is now tales of taylor and then now my pokemon channel has kind of become my main stuff we're and we're not endorsing dumpster diving no. here. from there let's float over to discovering what the third pokemon is going to be on your dream team who's jo- joining shiny iliamite and shiny mousehold okay let's go uh let's go deli bird so i was inspired by my friend the supreme arcanines to do mm. uh to do some cosplay shiny hunts back in the day and uh and so that's really what kind of sparked me to get into shiny hunting especially like full lot shiny hunting and a lot of the older games and stuff like that so so I was like, what am I going to do with Scarlet and Violet? All the Pokemon are kind of scattered about. We're not doing random encounters. We're not encountering them in grass and then seeing them for the first time in the battle. Instead, we're seeing them all just spread out and around, you know? So I was like, what can I do that, like, is just fun? I'm dressed up as a character. I have a theme going for specific shiny Pokemon. What can I do? So I, I dressed up as... So I went to Glaciato Mountain in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is a big snowy mountain. And uh, I sported the best winter clothing that I could think of, which was Grusha's clothing. So I just dressed up like Grusha, and I just shiny hunted on the mountain. And, uh, you know, with no, I didn't have a sandwich going. I didn't, like, go for any outbreaks. I was just like, let's just run around the mountain and see what we find. It'll be fun. And uh, I had an eight-hour stream dressed up as Grusha. 
and I found nothing. <laughs> I found no shinies. So I was like, I, and I was excited too because I had had multiple streams that were far less time, and where I found you know a plethora of shinies. You know, I I you know just all sorts of ones. So I was like, okay, well you know what? Tomorrow it's a new day. I'll get back in this cosplay. I'll put this scarf back on, and we will find some different colored pixelated pocket monsters. And so I went back to Glaciato Mountain, sporting Grusha's clothing again, and uh, another six-hour stream, and I found nothing again. <laughs> so I was like, there's something wrong. There's something broken on Glaciato Mountain, or maybe my scarf's on too tight. I don't know. <laughs> um, but then finally, the third stream, I did another six-hour stream. I found three shinies, which was nice. Um, and I was kind of going for, like, you know, a snow, ice theme type thing. Uh, and the first shiny that I found was a low kicks, which kind of didn't fit the, it was kind of like a, like a funny, like, oh, haha, this, you know, this happened. And, uh, now to get to Jim, the deli bird, um, this whole time that I was on stream for the eight hours, the six hours, um, I wasn't just sitting there staring at my screen blankly. I started to develop this lore about deli bird about a specific deli bird named jim and how he was causing all sorts of ruckus on glaciato mountain and uh so and i was like but this specific deli bird is magenta colored and i need to find him so where is he i would talk to all the deli birds in the game i'd be like where is this where's jim and uh so you know this was just hours upon hours of this and it was uh it was a roller coaster really then I uh, had this person come in the chat, a random person, never, never have seen them ever before. And someone in chat, point, like, in if you're on Twitch, uh, there's these things called commands, and you could do an, exclam an exclamation point, and then a word, and typically something will, will happen in chat, like either like a link for something, like socials, or clips, or recent shiny, or whatever. Um, and so, <laughs> someone typed in exclamation point gem, which we did not have an exclamation point Jim. Someone was just doing it because Jim was the hot topic of the stream for, for many, many weeks. Um, and so this person came in, the first time chatter said, shutting down for 30 minutes. Immediately after someone said exclamation point Jim. And I was like, what? I was like, what does that mean? What are you talking about? What are you talking, what, who, hello, welcome to the stream. What, what does that mean? Explain that. And they never said anything. So I was so bewildered because I was like, shutting down for 30 minutes. Are they trying to like shut down my stream? What's happening? I'm scared. So then I click on their, on their, on their Twitch name. And I notice I'm like, wait, they're live right now. I was like, what? This is so weird. And of course, you know, out of all the things like, you know, the, I'll get to it. Out of all the things, this is all because of Jim. <laughs> this is all because of Jim. So I go to his stream. I raid him, which is just me basically putting all of my viewers into their stream and saying hi. And so I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? And the person, like, pretending like they didn't know me. So I was like, you were just in my chat. What do you mean? And apparently... They made a bot, and this bot would come to various streams and, like, gain channel points and interact and stuff like that, and the bot was named after this streamer, and if you typed in exclamation point Jim, the bot would shut down, to just in case if it was, like, annoying people or whatever, the bot would shut down if you typed in exclamation point Jim, so it was just a, a happenstance of just all this random stuff, this bot happened to be on my stream, I happened to type in, someone happened to type in exclamation point Jim, and it happened to respond to that specific, specific wording, and all because of just this made-up lore of, of Deli Bird. And soon after, I continue streaming, I find, you know, more and more shinies as, as all of the streams go on, it's multiple streams, um, and I keep hunting for Deli Bird. Finally, I, I started getting a bunch of follows. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, my stream's blowing up. This is cool. And then I realized, wait, no, I'm getting follow botted. So it's just a bunch of bots following me for some reason. And this wasn't the streamer that was doing it. This was just, ra this randomly happens sometimes as a streamer. You'll get, you'll get botted. You know, it just happens. Um, people want to play pranks or whatever. That's the internet. And, uh, and so, <laughs> so I clicked the home screen because I'm like, oh man, I got botted. Dang it. What is happening? And then I close the home screen and right in front of me, 
the shiny deli bird is just standing there. The whole, like, this whole time whenever I was getting follow on it. So it was just, like, this final prank of this shiny deli bird, Jim, just, like, to to just make this this manic episode of 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 storyline for this silly little bird um that's pretty much the story of jim i kind of know that i was a little all over the place with it but uh that's kind of it all all this took place over the course of like you know hours upon hours of streams so it was it was a build up of all this random lore that i was making about this deli bird and weird stuff happening during the streams because of it so well, talk about Tales of Taylor. That was really the epic tale. Oh right. my goodness gracious. Right. I mean, there's so much that we could unpack there, as is often the way yeah. with these podcast episodes. Just each individual segment that we talk about could be an episode in itself. But I mean, so you had, so this law, I don't really know where to start with this, if you want to but with this law, um, you had decided that this Delhi Bird. This shiny deli bird, the law that you built up, was called Jim before someone had typed in yeah, exclamation yes. mark Jim. Okay, yes. okay, 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 okay. Yeah. This I'm was all you. this was all pre like all made up while I was streaming that first sure. eight hour stream. So Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Um I mean in hindsight, I mean this fantastic law that was yeah. provided for you. So yeah. I mean that's uh, that's 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 yeah. all we can hope for, really. I can't believe you went for an eight-hour stream, then a six-hour stream with no... No shinies. Shinies. And I mean, again, yeah, as you say, you're seeing them in the overworld, so you're seeing loads at once. And over the course of that, with the odds being one in 4,096, yes, they're high odds, but... Do you just expect, yeah, at some point mm-hmm. during that? But then the fact that you got three in the third stream does kind of... Yeah. Uh, kind of tally. So it was the low kicks, and then what was the second one? So I found low kicks, and then I found Sneasel... And then okay. I ended, and then I, I was just about to end the stream, and then I found a Grievered, um, which okay, was nice, okay. which yeah, was yeah, nice. Yeah. I ended up finding um, another Grievered um, mm. th- while while also continuing to go for Delibird, um, mm. and uh, I found a Snover and oh, wow. um, and a Bronzong. <laughs> okay. Before I found before I found Jim. Delibird. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is there a reason why you named this Delibird Jim? No, I have no, no idea. Okay. It was just like wow. I was just making up a a random story, you know, during this, you know, eight hours sitting down, you know, just mm. like you know, sitting down with 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 chat and and on Twitch and stuff. You know, you say silly things from time to time, yeah. and and my mm. silly thing was just to make up this random lore about Jim, and it, you know, really wow. to top it all off because Jim was was such a uh, such a beast. I actually mm. caught him in a beast ball. Uh, which, okay. Is a very hard catch rate. Uh, mm. Beast balls are typically made for ultra beast Pokemon, and uh, I was like, you know what? No, this is Jim needs to be put in a. He needs to be put in a beast ball. So yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's going to be another shiny Pokemon in your team, presumably as well. Yeah, so, yeah. We got to do yeah. another shiny. No <laughs> good. Yeah, Jim, <laughs> the shiny Deli Bird. Welcome to the team. Okay. Well, let's go from there. You can provide me with. Speaking of Daily Bird, the present of talking to me about meeting Ashley and collecting. Oh yeah, of course. Yes, uh, as you can see, we we have a few things that, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, we also have um, um, a Pokemon room upstairs. Uh, oh. Our 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 bedroom is an Animal Crossing room. Um, we have a <laughs> really nice game room with all of our collections and stuff like that. And uh, we met because of video games, uh, actually. A uh, long time ago, actually, yesterday, yesterday was eleven years of her and I since since we started dating. We we started mm. dating eleven years ago yesterday. Um, oh. But uh, we met we met on on Twitter actually, and uh, because of Animal Crossing, and uh, you know I was I was looking at Animal Crossing tweets and I saw hers. I responded to it. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm super excited about the game too. I can't wait. And uh, and then she responded, and then eventually, you know, one thing led to another, and then we we had kids together. So, you know, so don't don't talk don't talk to people on the internet about Animal Crossing unless you want to marry them. <laughs> yeah. So she was also a, a a collector of things. You know, she had she had a lot of uh, Pokemon stuff and and just video game memorabilia, and as did I. And uh, you know, we finally paired them together, and so. So now our house is just full of full of really cool stuff, 
and mm. uh, and and it makes us both happy. So, so wow. yeah. How so? I mean, you say one thing led to another, but I mean, you were talking about the stuff. Did it turn out that you didn't live too far away from each other? I mean, how did you then right. take that stuff? I guess, into I guess being there's meat. There's some details in there, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, Technicalities. So, <laughs> <laughs> just animal crossings and and marriage that's that's all you need to know about um she uh she lived four hours away from me and uh so i was like oh dang you know that's not that far so um you know as we continued to talk and stuff like that we would have video chats and stuff and then we were like all right well let's meet up let's meet up and and uh, and hang out and uh and so we did and uh and then we were like okay cool we like each other this is awesome uh, so let's uh, let's be together, and so we did. <laughs> see. Um, yeah. But but yeah, no, we uh, we we were lucky enough to not live too far away from each other. I know four hours is still kind of far, but I mean, for a drive distance uh, in Texas, that's just a city to a city. So mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, of course, important to know that you knew each other very well before you decided to take that step. Yes, in absolutely. So yeah. we, we, we talked for a while before we were like, let's finally, let's meet in person. And yeah. we've also video chatted, which is an important thing to do online yeah. if you're talking to anybody. So yeah, we knew each absolutely. other, we knew we were real. Mm. So Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, exactly that. I think um, being from... The UK, the idea of a four-hour drive is kind of that's that's <laughs> like half the country, or you know, approaching that. But um, right. yeah, in America, yeah, these distances are. I've heard various competing theories about this: how Texas is either the size of England or bigger than the UK. I don't know exactly what, but what I do know is that apparently the UK can fit inside the US thirty-eight times. So that again, I just I can't my that. my tiny British mind cannot comprehend. <laughs> you can't comprehend that. Texas. It, yeah, your I think your big. mind must be thirty eight times bigger. <laughs> no, no, that's of... not the case. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> well, it's fantastic that you and Ashley were able to bond so strongly over this mutual love. And yeah, I think I've seen pictures here and there online that you've posted about the Pokemon room that you have, for example, and the other yeah, things in yeah. your collection. I mean, I, I was saying before we started recording, I was just admiring some of the memorabilia that you have behind you. This, for anyone who's listening on Spotify or any of the other audio apps, I do highly recommend that you check this out on YouTube so you can just see some of what Taylor's got in store. Exactly. <laughs> this this machine that we can just see behind you on the screen, this retro arcade game style thing, tell us about that. Uh, so Blockbuster used to have these things called uh, Pokemon Snap Stations, and you could go in there with your copy of Pokemon Snap. You could insert it into this little this little slot, right? Well, there's a slot there, for the little <laughs> slot right here. You could put your game in there, and you could print out stickers of the pictures that you took in Pokemon Snap, which is mm. really, really cool. Um, I don't have printer ink for it anymore because we printed out a bunch of stickers and so I need to get more printer ink for it, but it's a very specific <laughs> printer ink, um, so it's a little difficult. But eventually, um, as as uh, Pokemon Snap started fading out, uh, Pokemon Stadium was the next game that was coming out. So, you know, they were like, well, we don't want to make a whole new like thing, but we want people to be able to play and check out Pokemon Stadium. So then they just put, on, put these big stickers over this station actually so now you can kind of see it says pokemon stadium down here right, underneath yeah, yeah. it if if yep. i were to actually rip that sticker off uh it says pokemon snap uh, and that's and that's it but uh so yeah it, it uh it prints out um your stuff and you can mm. play the demo of uh pokemon stadium on it mm. it's pretty cool so so where did you find that uh so so um so it was exclusive to blockbusters uh which is a place where you I I kind of forgot. People probably don't know about Blockbuster. Uh, but, I do, but yeah, it's, right, it's a yeah, good point. It's, it's uh, a, how do you even explain Blockbuster? It's a store that you go to to get physical Netflix things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you would get yeah. DVDs to go and watch watch a movie or a VHS to go home and, and watch the movie, and then you'd return it to Blockbuster. Um, anyways, uh, we actually, you know, kind of boring, but we found it on eBay. Oh, right. So we were just oh, like, yeah. okay, you know what? Yeah, uh, we won it. And so I drove up and got it. And mm. then, yeah, now we have it. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, all right, well, speaking of blockbusters, who's going to be the blockbuster fourth Pokemon on your team, Taylor? Who's going to be joining Shiny Lumise, Shiny Mousehold, and Shiny Delibird? Let's go from from Penguin Pokemon to Penguin Pokemon 
Empoleon. Ah, yeah, okay. Empoleon. Empoleon's just uh, that. Really, there's I I don't know much much to say about Empoleon other than uh, yeah, I love penguins. Penguins are my favorite animal, but mm. uh. Empoleon, just in general, is just my favorite uh, of the starters, uh, Final Evolutions. I love its design. I love its typing. I love everything about it. When I saw Piplup, even just as a kid, I was like, oh, this, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Look at it. It's a penguin, and it's blue. Uh, so, so you know, I just fell in love with the whole line, and uh, and Empoleon is for sure one that I would, I couldn't imagine not having on the team. So, mm. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. I also, yeah, huge fan of Empoleon. I think to this day we don't have another water and steel dual type Pokemon, and uh, it's such a fantastic combination. And yeah, uh, Piplup, one of the Generation 4 first partner Pokemon, you can choose the water mm-hmm. type Pokemon in that instance. Sort of the equivalent of Squirtle, but in, uh, you know, a good in few fl- yeah. years later for those Generation yeah. 4. Diamond and Pearl, Pokemon games, uh, Penguins being a favorite animal. That's interesting. So yeah. why, why do you think that is? I'm going to be honest, I don't know. Uh, when I was in middle school, I just saw them sliding on their bellies, and I was like, that is so cool. I was like, I love this animal. That's so cool. Even though they can't fly, but they can fly in the water. They can fly mm. in the water. So I just thought, I just love penguins. I think they're I think they're adorable. Um, so, yeah. That's that's pretty They can fly yeah. in the water. I love that, uh, that <laughs> way of thinking. Yeah, it just turns, uh, it's becomes a superpower. Put them in the right environment, and they can certainly fly right. and uh, cool certainly being the operative word to apply to because, uh, <laughs> yeah um yeah, you definitely gave me too much laughter than i deserved yeah right there far yeah, more my laughter ba- than yeah I deserved. My, <laughs> no no i didn't even realize that i made a pun and and i like puns so i <laughs> okay all right good good yeah um yeah. yeah i'll pay you for laughing that hard later for, okay good yeah thank uh, you. making that yeah, bad yeah, joke yeah, yeah. Uh, so. I, i'll, I'll <laughs> so send you my I'll send, I'll send you my paypal information right yeah that'd be great yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds good yeah um all right well Empoleon. i'm re- assuming this one is not shiny no let's not go shiny. i i love okay. the shiny i love the shiny but Empoleon yeah. just in general you know it's uh just mm. a let's I, I don't want to make a full team of just shinies you know because yeah. i love i love pokemon in general but i also yeah. do love finding the rare variants of them as hmm. well. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And you've got to keep the mystique of those rarer variants by also honoring the regular versions of those Pokemon. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. In Pearlion, welcome to the team. And now, from there, let's go live. Tell us about Twitch. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, oh, man. Uh, Twitch was kind of uh, the, I guess I want to say, like, almost the height of the pandemic, really. Uh, I was bored. And um, <laughs> and also... Uh, Coming out of of uh, of just a terrible mental anguish, um, I was going to therapy and uh, dr- trying to just get help because I was like, "Hey, things aren't working too right up here. What's what's going on? Why am I always sad?" And uh, yeah, that's just put in in the simplest of terms. And uh, and I started doing Twitch as like a kind of a you know what? Okay, this is, let's just let's try it out. Let's see what happens. And I um, started shiny hunting on on. Twitch. So that was my whole thing. I was like, I'm just going to go on. I'm going to shiny hunt and we're just going to see what happens. And I uh, I was obviously blessed cuz I got I got some I found some cool shinies. Um one of my first ones was actually Galarian Meowth in Sword and Shield. And uh I was doing it full lots too. I was kind of I kind of at the time didn't really know how to shiny hunt. I was just like I guess I'll just run around in this grass and we'll just see what happens and I'll just talk to the people that are here. Or I'll just talk to myself, you know, because typically hmm. whenever you're beginning streaming, no one no one is really watching. You'll have maybe a couple of your friends or whatever, but um, if they want to tune in. Um, but you grow you grow an audience, and so I was just like, well, if nobody's here, I'm just going to talk to myself or sing or, or <laughs> do something. I'm just going to say something. Um, and so, so I know I had a, a few of my friends uh, were there, and uh, I was like, well, I want Meowth, and... I also hadn't seen, I left everything as a surprise to myself. Typically, I'd go online and I would see, like, well, what what did people find? Like, what Pokemon are, are they showing off? Or um, is there an article about a new cool Pokemon or, or what? I, but I didn't see the Galar decks at all going into Sword and Shield. So um, I found a few Meowths and I was like, okay, they're, you know, they're cute. And then, like, after, like, t- seeing only 12 of them, and this was also full odds, so 1 out of 4,096. After only seeing, like, 12 of them, I, a Meowth that was a different color popped up on my screen. I was like, oh. In my head, I was like, wait. 
And I was like, oh, maybe it's like a, a gender variant. Like maybe the, like the female is like a different color, kind of like the, the meow sticks or something. And then it sparkled. And I was like, what? What? I was like, that fast? And so, um, you know, and this being on stream as well, it was just be it just became like, okay, I got to keep doing this. This is this rush, this great feeling that I have right now. I got I want to find more of these things. And so uh, so I began my Twitch journey. And uh, I think I want to say after like maybe two years of doing it, I, I became Twitch partner of uh, just just you know having all sorts of fun shiny hunts, uh, cosplay shiny hunts, dressing up and um, and yeah, it was a it was a great uh, just a really cool and great journey. My my whole intention for even beginning Twitch was to make YouTube videos. So I was like, well, you know what, I, I want to make some stuff on Pokey Tot or well on on my Tales of Taylor channel, and so. I was like, let's let's stream it all, and then let's kind of just edit some some really cool some cool stuff together, and and also film some stuff, and uh, make it into a, a whole uh, video experience. So that way, I get to hang out with people uh, live and and chat with them and and have fun and um and uh, and yeah, and and then make fun fun videos that get to live on the internet forever. And uh, now. The streams have turned into a little bit more of a of a chaotic uh, mood because, and this is really to blame for Jim for. Um, I have an animated deli bird that stands um, on. It's an animated shiny deli bird that sits on the layout, and and people can redeem to make him talk. So if they're watching the stream and they gain channel points, they can use those channel points to make Jim say whatever he wants so you can just be like hey you know do better or you know find hurry up and find a shiny stop having a skill issue or just just making fun <laughs> of me generally so now jim gets to be a part of my streams all the time which is fun because he just sits there and he just says silly stuff so <laughs> yeah it, it just like a, an AI voice generated coming. Yeah, through. it's it's just right, like a okay, robotic. Sure. Yeah, the basic robotic voice you would you would. Okay, hear. okay, yeah, sure. So. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Yeah. First of all, though, thank you so much for your openness with what you shared there. I uh, we're all very sorry to hear oh, about the okay. struggles that you were going through. And I mean, yeah, of course, COVID was a really, you know, a very very strange and difficult time. Oh, absolutely uh, for for all of us. Um, I'm so pleased that you're able to find a tonic to that in streaming and it's interesting that it was streaming because of course streaming can require a lot of um you know brings with it pressures of its own um but i'm pleased that actually for you it was what you needed absolutely yeah no it streaming is uh you know because you're you're there's no breaks it's not like you're recording a video and you can be you oh you messed up saying something you know no you got to just keep going <laughs> yeah. and uh and you definitely have to roll with the punches too, you know, because there are there are mean people that exist on the internet, and uh, and you know they come from time to time. But you know, if you don't let it bother you, if you don't let it get to you, um, then you're good. You just do your own thing and do what you want to do, and just have fun. Mm. So, and that's what I feel like I've been doing. So, yeah, I mean, it, obviously, I guess when you're starting out, and at any point, sometimes it can be hard not to let that stuff get to you. But I guess the more you do that. Yeah, just the the more used to it get, the the more used to it you get, and right. um, it's uh, yeah. I'm so pleased again that um, it was able to provide so much joy for you, and Thank you. Thank I can't you. believe the <laughs> twelve what twelve encounters, and then you found <laughs> the shiny glare in me out again. I think for anyone watching or listening, they must be getting the impression well, shiny Pokemon can't be that hard. I mean, you just you just sort of seem to find shinies in your sleep. But then, of course, you did have those streams where you went fourteen hours <laughs> without <laughs> yeah. finding one. So uh, it, it does balance out, right? I Absolutely. And I, I say this on stream a lot, and uh, and uh, people get annoyed at me saying it, but it's so true. You know, if you're if you're shiny hunting, or if you've ever wanted to get into shiny hunting. And you start doing encounters. Eventually, you will find a shiny Pokemon. You just have to keep doing it. The only way mm. you won't find it is if you don't do the encounters. So if you want something, if you're like, I want this blip bug to be a different color, then mm. you gotta you gotta just keep doing the encounters. And eventually, yeah. you will find it. And you only gotta do it once. Once you find the blip bug, you're done. And you did it. And you have a mm. cool new partner that's a different color, and it sparkles, and it's beautiful, mm. and you get to nickname it a silly name like Jim, so you can nickname it Billy. <laughs> Probably that's a good nickname for a blip bug, I think. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, that's a good nickname. So yeah, yeah. 
If anyone's wondering why people would want to do that, I think, again, it, as someone who also had a random experience when they were much younger of running, happening to run into a shiny Pokemon, I think it's that nostalgia factor. There is a real sort of, as I was talking to Matt about in the episode that I recorded with him, there's mm-hmm. a real sense of it being the journey, not the destination. of The shiny hunting itself is very, very rarely the main activity. It's what you're doing on the side, be it streaming or mm-hmm. listening to a podcast or watching a film or YouTube or what have you. Um, and you're just getting the encounters in almost subconsciously and then you're rewarded uh, out the blue completely randomly with this incredibly rare find. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I can understand for someone who's not so familiar with China Hunting how it might um, it seem an odd thing to do, but it's the kind right. of thing you just got to try it. And I mean, there's a thriving shiny hunting community and it's, uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot of rush involved. And we're going to rush over from there to our next random encounter, which is the fifth Pokemon on your dream team. So who's going to, who's it going to be? Oh, geez. Um, let's, uh, let's go see that th- this is where it got really hard for me because there's okay. so many, there's so many Pokemon that I really like. I'm going to just go, um, I'm gonna go Jolteon. Okay. I'm gonna go Jolteon. Jolteon's mm. my it's my favorite evolution. Okay. And I think it looks really cool. Um, so that's I don't really have like a, a story with it or anything. It just Jolteon just is really, really cool looking and mm. um yeah. So th- I think I'm just gonna have to add Jolteon. It's my favorite Gen 1 yeah. Pokemon. So okay. yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, nice to have a little bit of generation one love coming out uh, as yeah, well. So. Yeah. Jolteon joining the team, and uh, I mean, is it the is your favorite Generation One Pokemon? You think it looks really cool? Is it the kind of thing where, if you were to do a playthrough of Red, Blue, or Fire Red, Leaf Green again, would you always have a Jolteon on your team, or do you tend to mix things up? I think so. See, it's hard with the evolutions because all of the evolutions are great. You know, I really like Vaporeon. I love Sylveon. Um, I love Glaceon. So it's like, you know, obviously I would love to evolve Eevee into anything, but Jolteon is my favorite. So like, uh, I think, I think I would just, yeah, I would choose Jolteon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I was to do a new playthrough of like red, blue, yellow, or let's go fire red, leaf green, um, (laughs) that Eevee would be turning into a Jolteon. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, makes total sense. I think we the, we all have a Pokemon that's like that for us. Mm-hmm. And since we've already spoken about Jim the Dirty Bird, it's time to race right over from there on to what the sixth Pokemon is on your dream team. What's the final one? Oh, man. Can't, do, do, do I get, like, can I say, like, the, the runner-ups? Um, <laughs> t- tell you what, we can save the honorary mentions for the Rapidash round, the Patreon bonus content. Sounds good. Okay, then. I'm going to have to go with... Oh, man, this is so tough. Because I put two of them right next to each other on my list. And I was like, okay, it's got to be out of one of these two. I have to choose. Um, because I love them both a lot. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Armaldo, though. Okay. Armaldo. Armaldo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so I... Uh, you know, I've always just loved Armaldo since Gen 3. Whenever I saw it, I was like, dude, this thing is so cool looking. It, so it's a lot of the love of the Pokemon is just like, oh, it re- looks really cool. Um, <laughs> but the the other thing about Armaldo is that, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a connection with the fossil Pokemon as well, um, where uh, my, my friend Quick Panic, Kyle, uh, who you've done an interview with before, um, him and me host an event every year called Fossil Week where we just – gather up the community and see who can find as many fossil uh, was well, get as many people to uh to hunt for shiny fossil pokemon so uh so yeah just destroying the ecosystem as we know it with different colored pixelated dinosaurs <laughs> and uh and yeah we 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 originally started that by uh by racing for a shiny Pokemon in the Crown Tundra DLC for Sword and Shield. When that came out and we saw that there were wild fossil Pokemon, we were like, oh, this is so cool. We need to, we let's just race. Let's race for all of them. And so we started <laughs> doing that. And uh, and then it just eventually grew and grew and grew and became, a, now it, be, it became an event for uh, for anybody to join in and, and hunt for shiny fossils. So, mm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think fossil Pokemon are... Really, really cool. And, yeah, anyone who's not familiar, fossil Pokemon, normally you have to revive from fossils. Um, right. But, yeah, in uh, Sword and Shield, in a extension to the game, the Crown Tundra, you can find them just roaming around 
in the wild. So mm-hmm. uh, really cool addition there. Yeah, I love it. your shout out there to um, ruining the ecosystem in inverted commas with reviving all these sorts of Pokemon. That's exactly. I, I also make comedy skits on my channel, and that's exactly what the basis of one of them was. Oh, re- um, really? <laughs> yeah, it was like, <laughs> what do I, I do that. with these two thousand Omanite that I've revived? I mean, do I just put them into the wild? Well, no, that's an yeah. ecological nightmare. So what do we? <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh, Fossil Week is a lot of fun. I was participating in that this year. I didn't find anything. Right. I'm but, so sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hold you personally. Yeah, I, yeah, I, t- I, well, I took your I took your shiny luck. That's what it was. So. Yeah, right, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, Armaldo, yeah, and you know what? We, you've you've got a good mix of very um, personal connections to some of the Pokemon and ones that you just think look cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, Pokemon speak to us in different ways, so that's brilliant. Now it's time to ask you, out of your dream team, which Taylor is shiny Illumise, shiny Mousehold, family of four, shiny Delibird, Empoleon, Jolteon, and Armaldo? Which of these are you going to choose to be your partner Pokemon? Oh, that's tough. Um, you know, because I'd love to be able to travel along with uh, with Jim. You know, the thing about Delibird, too, is that uh, in his little bag that he carries around, he gives food to to wanderers or, or you know, people on trails, uh, Pokemon that are hungry. So, like, you know, I'd have this nice supply of food with me. Um, but also knowing Jim, he likes to... I get into uh, get into a mess with things, so I don't know if I want to bring him on an adventure with me. Um, mm. But uh, you know, then I have my favorite Pokemon, Elamise. I could obviously just uh, take her with me and and uh, go across the land. And I feel like I'm gonna have to. I feel like Elamise would be my partner Pokemon if I had one similar to Ash and Pikachu. If I had a Pokemon always on my shoulder, it'd probably be Elamise. Mm. It'd be a shiny Elamise just hanging out with me all the time. So yeah, yeah. The Muse is definitely friend shapes and just hovering oh, yeah. alongside you and a very happy Pokemon. Yeah. I think useful as well. A firefly, you know, if if it's dark out, you, it's it's like a, it's you, it's a torch that always follows you around. Yeah, um, and you bask in it, bask in the glow of the Muse. And yeah, I mean, it, I suspected it might be the Muse after the uh, again the tales that you spun for us that you, of course, are known for that you do so well. Right. Um, <laughs> that. Um, yeah, the the lore, the history that you have with that Pokemon. I'm finding a shiny again. That that's that's really got to stick in the mind. Um, and yeah, I can totally see how Jim the Dodo Bird would be the notable runner up there. So yeah, Shiny Lumise is your partner Pokemon. And now, that's my a different kind of question, Taylor. If you were a Pokemon, what do you think you would be? Uh, yeah. So I had to think about this, and uh, and I came up with the uh, Hoopa. I would oh. be Hoopa. Yeah. Hoopa's wow. really crazy. Hoopa can summon legendary Pokemon out of hoops. And also, Hoopa gets the pleasure of being able to just travel anywhere. You can just mm. instantly transport somewhere and go somewhere else in the world. So I'd lo- mm. I would love to be Hoopa. I would also be causing all sorts of ruckus and trouble. And uh, and also just visiting the world and in, in the blink of an eye. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. go from, from Kanto to... To Unova just instantly, you know? Yeah. So. That's, it's a very cool answer. That's what you'd like to be. What do you think you would actually be? Oh, right. Right. You you did even specify that that's... <laughs> that that is. It's what, great to get that insight. Right, right. What do I think I would be? Mm. <laughs> I, um... I would be... Um... You know what? I, I think I'd be. Oh, well, we can yeah. we can kind of workshop this, right? What type? Okay. Do, what type do we think you would be? What 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 type do you think you would be? I'll, I'll think as well. Let's go. Okay. Well, what well, what would you what would you say when you when you see me or you you kind of know me? You've seen my videos. What what what's mm. one typing that comes to your mind? The first type that comes to my mind in terms of the sort of cheekiness element is dark, but I don't think you're a pure dark type. I, I don't think, think so um, either. Yeah. Let me think. I think you're a, probably a dual type, and one of them might be dark. So, uh, what other types? We've got rock, we've got water. There's... I can see water. Um, mm-hmm. We've got electric. I can kind of see that too. Grass, um, poison, psychic, ground, fire, flying. I could see, I could see, I could see uh, dark dark water. I could also see dark fairy. Dark fairy. Um, Ooh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I could see I that. I could see... Yeah. Uh, what, what, um, the, are, what dark water Pokemon are there? 
There's Sharpedo. There's Sharpe- uh, Kavana. Yeah. You kind of got the hairstyle for Mulgrim. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there is that. I don't think you're Greninja. Oh, and you know, and also Crawdont? I can't see myself as Grimmsnarl, but I could see sure. myself as Morgrin or Impidimp, just kind okay. of running around in, in, uh, in the forest. Yeah, okay. Um, sure. I could, see, um, I could see that. Yeah, okay. I think... Let's go with Morgrim. Based on, based on the hair, yeah, I kind of want to go with Morgrim. If, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay with yeah, that. Well, I like Morgrim. Yeah. If you um, want to hear about uh, Joe Merrick, the webmaster of Cerebi.net, and his tales with Impidimp, then uh, do go and check out that episode <laughs> of the podcast as well on the channel. But uh, Morgrim is going to be the Pokemon that we've decided that you are. What do you think? Do you agree that Taylor will be a Morgrim? Let us know in the comments below. We'd both be fascinated to hear. And speaking of you all, it's time for your community questions. I posted online, as I always do, asking for questions for Taylor. And thank you so much for your submissions here. I apologize as ever if I mispronounce any of your names or handles. So, First question here from Aquas Toast. What is your favorite shiny that is not Illumise? Uh, Zera Aura. So, I mean, sh- shiny, mm. shiny Illumise is like, t- for sure, uh, Illumise just in general is my favorite Pokemon. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, and I love her shiny, but I don't think I'd say that she's my favorite. At one point, I probably did. Um, but I feel like as a shiny hunter, too, my shinies, my shiny tastes change. Like, I'm like, oh, you know, when Legends Arceus came out, I was like, oh, dude, Hisui and Sneasel is my mm. favorite shiny. Um, but uh, Zera Aura, I mean, Zera Aura is just, I, it's gorgeous. I, I love, I love the, the turquoise type teal with the white. And uh, I think it keeps a little bit of the yellow. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I do know that uh, Zero Aura is uh, for sure, for sure mm. my favorite. Very cool. So. Yeah, I love the color turquoise, and I was thinking about this as well. I, potentially, my favorite shinies are turquoise. Actually, Piplop. That's kind of that's got that turquoise in going. Piplop's great. Kind of Totodile um, and um, Latios as well. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, wow, really good answer. Thank yeah. you for that question. Thank you for your answer there, Taylor. Now. European shiny hunter Oliver MKP. Oh yeah! If you had to change the shiny colors of Illumise, what would you make it? Um, man, she's got a great shiny because the the purple turns the yellow, the yellow turns the orange, mm. um, and even the purple like with her eyelashes also is is yellow. Um, maybe I'd go like because just like you, I also like a, a teal. The teal mm. would kind of also blend in a little bit with the blue, so I'd maybe make this blue a little bit lighter, and then mm-hmm. like a nice uh, like a nice teal, and then mm. maybe make these gray. Okay. And then see Ooh. see what that kind of looks like. I think it'd be mm. like muted, but just imagining in my head, I think that could that could work if I had to. Yeah. If I had yeah, to, yeah, but yeah. I don't think I could ever make a better shiny than mm. than uh, than some of the shinies that Pokemon makes because they're always they always are a surprise. Yeah, you know, so absolutely. Yeah, that was a yeah, good such question. A, such a good shiny, and yeah, um, I love the palette that you came up with there. And thank you for that question as well, Oliver. Okay, now, what do you think you would be doing if not content? If not content, just not mm. content at all. Yeah, uh, probably working with animals. Uh, at one point okay. in my life, uh, I was doing animal rehabilitation, and uh, and I was a manager for a uh, a homeschool. Uh, or not a homeschool, <laughs> a uh, and a school a school program for homeschool children uh, working with animals, um, mm. and so I had I had a lot of them, and uh, also we would get calls in for you know uh, several animals that needed to be rescued or whatever, and so you know we would we would take them into our facility and we would take care of them and stuff like that. So uh, that was a blast, and you know I've always loved working with animals. And maybe that's a, kind of a testament to why I like Pokemon. I like the digital animals too, um, but yeah, I got to work with so many unique ones. Um, you know, it, it, I I had uh, so many different snakes, um, and and uh, we had rabbits, we had sugar gliders, we had hissing cockroaches, um, and uh, which helped me get over my fear of of a lot of <laughs> bugs. And my daughter actually helps me get over my fear a little bit too. Not necessarily a fear, but just some of them are like, oh. You know, but she has no problem just uh, picking up handling bugs or whatever. Uh, if she she'll ask me, she'll say, "Is it nice or naughty?" And I'll go if hmm. if I say like it's not a bug that'll bite, she's like, "All right," <laughs> she'll just pick it up. 
In fact, uh, just uh, a couple days, about three days ago, um, one of our dogs had a bug that she was attacking in the ground. So she went up with her bug net, caught it, and put it in her bug house. And then she said, look, Mommy, I saved this bug from Midna. <laughs> and it was a cockroach. <laughs> she just, she she had a cockroach. So, um, yeah, so she's brave, and I think she's taken on that that uh, that side of me that also loves uh, loves nature and, and uh, animals. So, mm. yeah. Wow. That's that's really fascinating. Working with animals. I was going to say that makes a lot of sense for your uh love of Pokemon as well. Uh, yeah. that's, that's what a fulfilling job that must have been. Um oh, absolutely. Taking in those animals and uh not only that but then helping children with those animals. It's mm-hmm. uh wow. I um does a part of you ever want to revisit that now? Yeah, I'm sure, but you know now as uh as a dad to two, because I, I also loved uh, working with children as well. We had, um, um, I was a camp counselor for a few summers, um, mm. uh, which was a lot of fun. And, um, but now, you know, with with two kids, uh, I think later on down the line, I'd like to get back into it um, once we, uh, once we settle, mm. settle in and I, you know, and it, it, it kind of levels out because I'd love for, for my, my kids too to, to share that same bond with with animals, so yeah, and amazing how um, how fearless your daughter is when it comes to those those bugs. That's <laughs> it's, wow, it's that's crazy. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And now, final question here from the one and only Matt Absol Blogs Pokemon. Mm. This is uh, yeah, potentially a pretty difficult question. What is your favorite item in your collection of any of them? That is a that's a good question. You know, I've got I've got a, a plethora of, of of things. Even even like I've got this uh, little Shadow Lugia plush <laughs> here. Um, I've got uh, the the Coliseum bonus disc. You see that in the background, the Snap Machine. But I actually do know uh, what what I guess I'd probably say it's my favorite. You know, I I have uh, it just it's one that I always think about, and it's weird because it's not even that crazy you know if you go upstairs in our room we have uh or not in our room but in our game room um we have you know wide selection of a bunch of games 500 wii games too uh it's it's bonkers um Mm. but one thing that uh that i put at the top of my list is actually uh dreamcast made a black or sega made a black dreamcast and the black dreamcast was the sports edition and i actually still have the box that the one that we played with and used uh, as kids, I have that original box still upstairs. Uh, so that's probably one of my favorite things that 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 I have uh, is a Dreamcast Sports Edition box. <laughs> mm. Wow! And as you say, I mean that clearly is a very very niche, rare collector's item. So that that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, five hundred Wii games. Wow. Yeah, I was on a I, I'm not sure I even point. knew there were that many in existence. There, so there's <laughs> actually about 1,600. Wow. Okay. Um, if we're including, like, all the Japanese games and European games, too. Um, I think I want to say about 1,200 just English titles. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, the Wii had an extensive library of games. And, uh, and at one point I was on a journey to... I guess I still technically am to get all of them. Um, hmm. But it is a, it's, a, it's a long-winded journey. You know, it's... Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anytime I went out to like Goodwill or whatever or, or yard sales, if there were some cheap Wii games, I'd buy them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, really, really good answer there. Thank you for your question, Matt. Thank you for that answer, Taylor. And thank you so much to all of you for the questions that you submitted there. Sorry to those of you whose questions I wasn't able to feature, but uh, t- Taylor, we've had a lot of submissions for <laughs> Taylor. Um, <laughs> If you'd like to submit a question for a future guest on Chisingra Chats, you can find my X socials at Chisingra. That's where I post out the call out for questions. I'd love to hear what you'd love to hear. So then, Taylor, we've heard a lot about you up to now, but what's next for you? Um, what's next for me? You know, just uh, just really living day by day, living in the moment as as a father, as a content creator, as a streamer. You know, I have ideas. But, you know, not necessarily the time to execute everything that I want. Um, but I want to do I want to do fun things. You know, I want to make I want to make fun videos. And uh, and yeah, so I uh, the next thing that I'm I'm probably focusing on 
is actually, it, this is a very niche thing in the Pokemon games, but in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, um, if you beat the Elite Four multiple times, Lorelei starts doing some retail therapy, and in her house on the Sevi Isles, she will buy extra plushies for her house. And eventually, if you beat the Elite Four 200 times, her house will now be flooded with plushies. And so that is one of my missions and, and a goal uh, of mine to do and uh, take care of. There's a plethora of other videos that I'm, that I'm working on as well. So, mm. so yeah. Well, we can't wait to see what you're going to... What the content of some of those videos will be. And it's such a cool touch that, uh, you know, even after that many times, the thought that went into... Um, how the game rewards you for that little changes that can be made. Yeah. So that sounds like a really, really interesting challenge. So very interesting to hear. And finally, Taylor, looking back from now as content creator, streamer, all the way back to the Taylor who found <laughs> that shiny sand true that they knocked out in elementary school. What advice would you give to that younger you? I mean, there's one very obvious piece of advice that is don't knock out that sanctuary. But more generally, <laughs> in terms of life, what advice would you give yourself? No, you you said it. That's a, that's probably it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, uh, oh man, um, this is kind of more of a basic answer, but just you know, just live it in the moment. Uh, I've I I feel like mentally i've had i've had an issue with like you know with with the digital age that we live in and the online age that we live in you know social media is at our fingertips all the time and so uh you know i found myself comparing my life and my existence to a lot of people online which is is not right and um i've been tr trying to live by this quote recently that i actually heard from john cena of all people um <laughs> But it's a it's a quote by a multitude of of individual um, people. But uh, Theodore Roosevelt had said, uh, "Comparison is the thief of joy," and it's something that I really really like um, uh, set in motion for for myself to to like. Okay, that that yes, that makes absolute sense because it is because anytime I would compare myself or or anything in my life to someone else, you know, I, I would immediately be like. Oh, this well, this doesn't feel good, you know. So, uh, so yeah, just uh, be being thankful for what I have and uh, and not getting so distracted by uh, by social media and and uh, and the negative things that are out in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, and hopefully my younger self would listen to me and be like, okay, yeah, <laughs> I can I can do that easy peasy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, comparison is a thief of joy. I think that those are really really wise words in this day and age and uh, hope that a lot of people benefit from hearing that just stay to your path control the things that are in your control and that's uh that's as much as we can do and that first thing you said uh, just being in the moment that's exactly the advice that uh quick panic gave himself as well when he asked this question at the end of his <laughs> oh episode. really so, oh wow uh, clearly you guys really are on the same wavelength um that's funny. well thank you so much for all that taylor and the chat does not end there because now we'll be getting into Taylor's rapid ash round quick fire bonus questions that Taylor has not prepared for. So, as I said, we'll be talking a little bit more about the honorary mentions that Taylor wanted to give on his team of Pokemon. What is Taylor's favorite mainline Pokemon game? Does Taylor have a favorite type? And we'll be talking about things beyond Pokemon as well. Like, what does Taylor do in downtime that isn't to do with gaming? If you want to hear about any of those things, maybe we'll talk about the Safari Week IRL, the in real life that happened this past summer as well. If you want to get to know Taylor even better, then hop over to my Patreon for the Rapid Ash Round. That's going to be linked in the description below. You can support me as a creator so I can keep making more episodes like this and plenty more, uh, plenty of the other content on my channel as well. Um, Fundamentally, I really appreciate you listening to this episode as it is, so please do not worry at all if you are not in a position to be able to do that, but if you'd like to hear an extended chat with Taylor, then you can in the Patreon linked below. And Taylor, thank you so much for such a fun chat. It's been really great getting to know you better, uh, getting a bit of an insight into your life story. I've had a blast, so thank you so much. Uh, no, no, thank you. Thank you very much, Merry Man. I am uh, I'm happy to be here, and uh, it's, been, it's been a blast, so thank you. I'm very pleased. Would you say you're feeling merry now? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I am for. Um, uh, that's very kind of you, uh, Taylor. Thank you so much. And uh, if we want to keep up with you online, where can they find you? Um, I'm at Tales underscore of underscore Taylor. Um, somebody took the full name on the at on Twitter, um, as well as 
Tales of Taylor or at Pokitot on YouTube. Uh, so those are those are the main ones, and I stream um, pretty much every week, uh, a few days of the week, uh, on Twitch.tv slash Tales of Taylor. So uh, so yeah, if you want to hop in and hang out with me, you can. Enjoy those Tales of Taylor. Make sure you're going and checking out that fantastic, and as I said before, hilarious content, and time for a bit of good old YouTube spiel. If you've enjoyed the episode, then again, please do like and subscribe. All those things really do go such a long way. And drop a comment as well. We'd love to hear your thoughts on what Taylor's shared with us, provided a lot of food for thought to any of your own favorites or the Pokemon you'd have on your dream team time with Taylor's. What Pokemon would be on your dream team? I'd love to hear all of these things, so do drop a comment. Also on the channel, I vlog the events that I cast uh, as a Pokemon video game caster. I do comedy skits, as I mentioned before. I stream too. I'm currently doing a shiny teal mask quest. I found a shiny rare mark yanma now a yan mega absolutely oh. mind-blowing i also stream competitive content as well uh using interesting teams interesting pokemon you might not expect as well as perhaps the more reliable teams as well so do go and check that out i've got all my socials linked below as well i'm at Zindra on x tiktok and instagram got my discord community linked below as well if you're a fan of everything that the pokemon video games have to offer then it is the place for you and it would be a pleasure to see you in there in Chizindra's chocolate factory come and join the merry folk uh if you want to spread the word about the show use the hashtag six pokemon one life story the aim is to have as broad a range of guests on the show as possible from competitive to casual and everything in between so any ideas for guests any suggestions for guests or any feedback on the show you can use choosing at gmail.com or find me on those socials that i mentioned episodes drop every wednesday on youtube as well as on the audio apps and with that being said taylor it's time to get into your rapidash round so if you're not joining us over on patreon for that then it's goodbye from taylor see you later thanks for <laughs> hanging out <laughs> Thank you for going along with being put on the spot there, Taylor. And it's goodbye from me. Thank you for listening, and see you next time on Chisinga Chats. Will there be another six Pokemon, one life story? Taylor, how are you feeling about these bonus questions? Um, not scared at all. You know, not intimidated. Good. I am ready. <laughs> I'm locked in. Yeah. So, yeah. I know Rapidash, so it's a Pokemon from Gen 1. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm already, is. I already got this. <laughs> hey, good. It's going to be a breeze for that test that's coming up later that we talk about. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so, first of all.